Deal TV. Learn and earn. It takes time to build a plan. It takes hard work, commitment, and all this is done. If you are committed to the business, that's the art, business, music, you'll be earning big. But if you don't have the information, if you don't have the right contacts, if you fail to get this, all that is needed, then you'll be ending up to be a mediocre artist or a failure. But you can get all this information right here on the Deal with Man 75, here on Deal TV Africa, Deal TV Learn and Earn. My name is Maya 75. I thank you for watching Deal TV Learn and Earn. Consider subscribing, commenting, liking, and sharing. I'll go ahead and thank you for all those who have been watching us. Uh, building up the relevant information, building up the hype and making sure that we get committed and give you the information that you need. Right now, we've got a guest on the bench on the show who I would like to introduce himself and then I'll tell you later what we are going to talk about. I'm glad to host you on this show. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Michele Mukisa, son of the Nile. I'm a world music singer from Uganda, Africa. And basically, I think, if I may say, I'm very excited so far. I've not yet seen much, but so far, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited too. So, we are going to head straight to some of the, inform uh, the questions that would uh, guide maybe a new artist or this artist that has been in the industry. But... He, needs, he or she needs to scale up the business and take it a notch higher. The business so bit. we're going to tackle different questions, but mm. I think all these are intended to dissect the relevant information that our viewers out there who are ready or willing to take on the music business get okay. to be informed and know what to do. So uh, basically, if you, you okay, so basically you said you were a world music artist. But then uh, I think the process and the tactics are more so related. Yeah, the same. So if it's you're doing music. dance or R and B, hip hop, yeah, everything same. is related. So uh, from like like Africa where we are, uh, though Afrobeat is taking over the whole world. Okay. But then you will see that there are many artists that are lacking behind. Yeah. So what should an artist in Africa, down there in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, do to go to the global scale so that we can see the, them being equated to the likes of uh, Banner Boy and the likes? Mm. Uh, basically, as a musician and uh, an African, besides as a business person, I believe uh, if you want your product to get out there, you have to make sure your product is accessible by the people that really need the product. Okay. Besides that, there are people that really don't know your product, but it's still your own personal duty to make sure that your product gets out there in the market. So if you're a musician and you're doing music, you see music is like, is, is like, like, like uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. As a musician, you're like a chef of your recipe. So if you're creating something, you should be knowing who is going to consume what you're creating. Mm -hmm. If you're in the kitchen and you're cooking, you just have to know that this kind of meal is destined for this kind of people. So if you're living in a Chinese area where there are very many Chinese and you open up a restaurant that prepares Chinese food, you're in business. Mm -hmm. But if you put the Chinese restaurant down there in Katanga, I'm so sure you'll be misplaced because most people even don't know that meal. Mm -hmm. So... If you're preparing your music, you prepare it for particular people. So if you're doing music that is going to work out for the international market, it means after doing the music, you should make sure you place that music where people who are internationally located can find the music. Okay. So in this case, you're an artist, you've done your songs, they are good, maybe an EP could be an album, <clears throat> and you decide to, 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 to promote your music, you go to your lo local radio stations and you place your music there. Yeah. For sure, you won't go really international because you'll be only being you'll be played within your home area. Mm -hmm. But if you want really to go up, you make sure you utilize YouTube, utilize uh, platforms like Facebook, 
uh, those are that's just social, social media platforms. So if you're going into music deeply, then you will need like uh, Amazon, Amazon Music, you'll need Tidal, you'll need uh, Spotify, you need Deezer, there is Melon from South Korea. So that means at least someone will come across your music either on the playlist or as they're going through, they will discover you and they'll play your music. Okay, so like we've seen that uh, today with the access of the internet, we are not limited by borders. Yeah. But then uh, there are people who believe that there should be a kind of quota system. Okay. We, like they say, uh, the, like the rotation on the airwaves or TV and radio should be maybe 75% local. Okay. Uh, does this have to, do, like, do we have to push away the foreign music for from the, the local music, uh, local platforms for us to succeed or we better embrace mm. it as well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, practically, uh, if you really want to, your market to grow, home market to grow, then you make sure the people from home support your market, your product. So that means uh, if you reduce foreign music and you always play around with our own music, people will listen to our music. But still, our music won't improve if there isn't competition. So if Arakeli's songs come to Uganda, if Asha's songs come to Uganda, the production is good, the vocal qualities are good, for sure, and, it, and, and the music is within and it's competing with us. That mm. means we need to improve for people to love our music too. Mm. It means it's going to help us so much. If we close out our doors from other kind of music or the windows, mm. it means we are going to let our artists become very redundant. Since there won't be any competition, They'll do their bubblegum music, they'll do their low quality music, and they'll be sure these people have no options. They'll have to, they've monopolized the market. Mm -hmm. But if there is an influx of uh, Nigerian music and other music, the kind of music within a country like Uganda, it gives us competition. Because like in Uganda, we've seen the difference currently. Mm -hmm. When we listen to, 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 uh, to different artists like Fik Fameka and uh, the, the so on, the likes of him, I see some improvement in the sound quality, the flow of music, and uh, besides the video the quality videos, yeah. because of this competition. So I think it's always also very good. Yes, we should support our home market by putting up some avenues that really support them as artists, but still we should let other, other kind of music come in. Because if you really block them from your own country and you expect them to play your music internationally, then I think that is being a double standard thing. It's a two-way traffic. We support you here, you support, you support us there. And you see, when we come together, there's always benefiting. Okay. And that is very good. So we are talking about collaboration, not competition. But yeah. then when you look at, the, uh, like specifically if you look at the Ugandan music industry, yeah. there is a lot of, like in the last 21st century, we've been having a lot of influence from the Jamaican music. Yeah. And then if we are impl uh, influenced by the Jamaicans, then we tend to neglect the local music. So do you think we can go international using the, the foreign Jamaican. Jamaican music? Okay. Uh, that it is, the answer is in a two-way. Yes, we can. And no, we might not succeed very well. We can in a way that internationally, Jamaican music has already been promoted. So if you do it well to the standard, the J Jamaican standard, it means someone in Japan won't even tell you you're not from Jamaica. They'll listen to your music and they'll support you, thinking they're supporting music from Jamaica. Then uh, in another way, uh, it is not good because uh, you don't have an identity. So if you create something that is new and unique and that is your own, you fight hard to push it and when people love it, you benefit a lot from it because you will monopolize the market and others you won't be competing. Yes, if you're doing Ugandan music style, you won't be competing with Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. When people love your work, they will love your work and that is always good. Okay, let's stop there for a moment then we head to the adverts and they'll be coming back. Deal TV, learn and earn. Are you looking for a solution to all your media needs? Look no further. We've got the answers right here. 
At Effect Media, we offer 360 solutions as a one-stop center for all your media needs. With our in-depth experience in audio production, video production, mixing and mastering, we guarantee you high-quality African ready men more. Reach us on plus 256-0702-305-541 and plus 256-0758-571-963. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Effects Media Record Label. Effects Media, imagine more. Deal TV, learn and earn. Yeah, thank you for watching Deal TV, Deal TV, learn and earn. This is the deal with my 75. So, like we've been saying, yeah. <clears throat> my next question would be what should or could the, the someone who is starting up, mm. I won't call him or her an upcoming artist, but he's interested in taking on the music business or being an artist, what are those considerations he or she should look at when choosing a music style or genre? Okay. Uh, about choosing the style to sing, I'm sure there is style, any style that is bad. Whatever style, if you can do it well and you can market it well, it might work out. But uh, basically, if you really have something that comes from your own home, that is your own kind of music, and I'm sure the world out there is yearning to listen to something new. The thirst of finding some new sound, new music is too much. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you come up with something that is your own, uh, your own original thing, I'm sure you're going to take the world by storm and you just surprise them with your kind of music. So as you've asked that, what, sh what, what should an artist do who is thinking of capturing the international market one yeah. you should be positioned when you're positioned you look at where you're going to sell your music who you're going to sell it to and which shows you'll be performing yeah. internationally there are festivals so if you see you look at the festivals and you realize which kind of music is really loved by people in the who attend the festivals so that's when you go to the drawing board and you create the product that fits the market so mm -hmm. and you decide that this is what will work out Despite you not really loving it, you can learn to love it. Because some people like find it hard to start going into a style that they are not supposed to be doing. But basically, every style is good. If you give it time, you listen to it, you'll fall in love with it automatically. And you'll start doing that same thing. Okay. So uh, you've been talking about the positioning. Yeah. And then uh, doing my research, there is a school of thought that thinks uh, the, if you follow the... Like in Africa, if you follow the slave trade routes, uh, those uh, countries that we are connected to the seas and ports where these uh, slave traders were taken are the ones that are having the established music industries. Yeah. So what's your take on this? Does it influence? Because if you look at uh, TZ, mm. you look at uh, the Nigeria, Ghana, route, and then you go south to South Africa, you see that there is the, the proximity of these countries to Europe, Asia, and Australia yeah. give them an edge, is it? Yeah, there is, <clears throat> there is one reason why it happens that way. Because if you tell me the, the colonizers looked at those countries and they used those locations as routes, mm -hmm. it means there was accessibility to Africa through those routes. Yeah. Like uh, Tanzania, there is uh, the Indian Ocean, it's still with Nigeria too. So if there is accessibility, if the, the, the colonial master has also sold says to Africa and they used such routes <clears throat> to come in Africa, then it means those routes are one of the best uh, like lines of trade or of, of visitation of, of anything, whatever. Yeah. So these areas that are connected to, the, to those uh, routes to the, to the oceans, to the seas, really have higher chances because they have an influx of, uh, of tourists yeah. because there is accessibility. So remember when tourists come in, they listen to, to unique mm -hmm. kind of sounds right. and they're like, okay, I think we love this. And when they go back home, they tell the other people they leave home. And if someone's really think of organizing something like an event, mm -hmm. sometimes they might want to look out for you and they call you over to perform. And that is how that influences the music industry. The routes, the accessibility, it's a big factor. 
Though currently because of the modern technology like the internet, I think everyone is having an access. You don't now need the sea. Yeah. Though it still plays a role though. Okay. So uh, the next question could be like, uh, like if we see in Africa and specifically in Uganda mm. that uh, uh, we have no corporate companies that are involved in to investment in music and the music management. Mm. So <clears throat> most of these artists are either helped out by friends or families. Yep. But then the issue arises where there is the issue of profitability. If someone, a parent is having a kid mm. uh, that he is supposed to sponsor or invest in to take on a music career, mm. is the business profitable? And then two, if it's profitable, what could be the required, like average estimated investment that someone has to do with when he or she is starting out? Uh, talking about the music business in Uganda, uh, there are no corporate companies in, in the music business in Uganda simply because I think uh, the problem starts with us, the artists. No. We are not really organized and ready and to be managed. And Yes. Because we are not ready to be managed, we are not ready to be invested in, it makes us unreliable. And because of this, there is no one that can invest in their good, hard-earned money yeah. into a venture that is not sure, that has no direction. So for sure, most people tend to, to pull out of it and they wouldn't do that. Okay. And uh, so, like you've said, uh, could someone put in money? Yes. If you're really deciding to invest in music, you should have to look at different factors. You should look at the market where you're, you're going to put your music because now that is business. If you're going to do business, you have a business plan. You're like, we are going to have this product and we are going to market this product this way and we are going to sell this product here. So the music business is, is very tricky because it's not a sprint. It's not a hundred meters that today you put in, tomorrow you money get the money. Yeah. It's more of a marathon. Yeah. Everything, every little... Every little brick you add on increases the size of the of, of the house. Yeah. So it's like uh, you put in a little bit and a little bit as you're pushing step by step. I'm sure by the time you get somewhere, you'll be making profits and having returns. Mm. But still, it's very tricky because you need to know the market where you're putting your, your, your product and who you're really putting out there. Is this person ready to, to stand as an artist? Is this, this person ready to do business? Oh. So it's very tricky, but still you can invest in, in music. Okay. So, but if you're thinking of investing in music in Uganda here, I think you should start with the basic things. You might think of having a recording studio that is personal, that maybe sometimes you can bring any producer you want and they do the music there. Yeah. You see a personal studio, a home studio is very good for an artist because you have demos, you have simple things, simple ideologies that you need to put yeah. into sound. Right. So with a, with a demo studio, you can be doing everything you want for within there. So you save some money. Uh, <clears throat> you need a camera yeah. because you need some basic footages. So basic footages for either interviews or quick, quick things, or if you're speaking out somewhere. But with this modern technology, you might, ha you might not need a camera. You can use a phone. Yeah. There are smartphones that shoot 4K. So if you have that also, that would be very good. So in your team, you'd need at least someone who can do video editing, simple. That is already a necessity. And uh, besides that, then you'd need really songwriting techniques. The artist could be a songwriter or you could get a songwriter that you collaborate with. Okay. And as a startup, I think you don't need people that really need money. Yeah. You need people who really have faith in what you guys are doing. You start it up together and uh, you, do, you, you do your paperwork and... Uh, you become shareholders. You can uplift it slowly and you get somewhere. So like you've asked me, uh, how much money would it need for an artist to, to stand out? I've seen people that come with uh, like 100 million and like in, uh, in about three months, they have two videos and their music is nowhere. And as musicians, they are nowhere. Okay. I've seen artists that come with only 5 million and they do something and they get somewhere. So about how much you need to become an established artist, I think there isn't an amount. You just have a pro you need 
a proper way you're going to do your work, you need a team. Nevertheless, money is, ne is a necessity in doing music because you need to promote your music and uh, you need to, to shoot videos. You need a team that really helps up. You need bloggers too. Yeah. So about the money, if I may say, you can start up with five million and you push. Okay. That is for a startup. But if you really want to start it big, if you have a hundred million, I'm sure you can you can go international easily because you'll pay bloggers in the UK, you'll pay some little money to bloggers in Nigeria, and they'll talk about you. They might host you for some interviews. You pay for that, and you could get somewhere. So it's 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 it depends on your ability and what you're really looking for. But you don't need much money to start up. If you can sing, start it up there and then. Okay, let's take it from there. Deal TV. Learn and earn. My queens. What? Let's go. It's our. Where's it all come already? Holy King Party. My queen. Got to Jayoka. Holy King. Holy King Party. Deal TV, learn and earn. Thanks for keeping yourself abreast with Deal TV, learn and earn. This is the deal with my 75. We are giving you the ultimate solution to music in Africa. So, as we've been saying, yep. uh, you've known the budget, you've known uh, all the necessities, but then you have to, based on the budget that you have, to choose which kind of music you can do. So, from your kind of perspective which music could be easier to push to the uh, international, market international market with a moderate budget uh <clears throat> basically there isn't any music that is easier to push on the known to the international market the only thing is how you package your work and how you're going to let the music go out there mm -hmm. so uh, currently afrobeat is really trending because uh our counterparts from Nigeria have tried to push it much. They've put in much into marketing it, marketing the sound and pushing the sound. And currently I've heard even Beyonce knows doing some kind of music that yeah. is more of Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. So I believe these people have done something for the, for the Afrobeat industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives you a chance. But again, if you think of using Afrobeat for the international market, mm -hmm. because already it's sailing out there, you forget one thing everyone is now doing Afrobeat. Yeah. So the competition is high. Yeah. And the, this sound is almost sounding now alike. Yeah. Sometimes you listen to this artist and you're like, is this this? They're like, no, that is again another one. Yeah. So these people have again over copied and pasted this Afrobeat thing. Yeah. And uh, it has, they've made it, they've diluted it. So the quality isn't really that much in it. It has become bubblegum that you listen to it this month and next month you're listening to something else. And vis-a-vis -vis the songs from people like Celine Dion and, uh, and uh, Lionel Richie, that you've always listened to the same songs and you still want more. So it becomes tricky. So talking about the, the style you should be doing for the international market, yeah. I think you can choose whatever style you need mm. to do. Yeah. And you should only find a way of how to make these people into, on the, onto the market understand it. Like for me, I do world music, and world music is really not basically style. No. It's called world music because these people from the UK never knew really how to call it. They had a sound that was unique and came, and they're like, now what, what is this? Mm -hmm. So they're like, no, this is world music. It is from around the world. Yeah. So world music has, has uh, singers from, uh, from South America, that is Spain, where, yeah, there is down here in, uh, in, uh, in, in Europe. They are the artists from there because it's more like cultural music. You blend it with cultures. There are guys from India that are those from the from the Arab world. So it's tricky. So world music is just mixing your kind of uh, instruments around, blending it in the way you can. Then you sing out your music. Okay. So any music can really work out. Okay. So if you look at the language, okay. does it matter in making it <clears throat> to the international market? 
uh, language. Actually, language, there, there, yes, it works out, and no, it doesn't. Why? Um, if you're doing English, and you're doing your music onto the international scene, uh, there is high chance you're going to make good money because English is widely spoken and listened to. Yeah. So very many people will support your music. Yes, it does work. <laughs> then no, it doesn't work in a way that if you're choosing to sing English and you're from Africa, you're from Uganda like me, yeah. and you're only doing fully English, remember on the, you know, on the international market you're competing with Celine Dion, there is Asha Raymond, there is Ara Kelly, uh, there is Beyonce, Beyonce Rihanna, uh, and there's Rihanna. Fenty. These people are as talented as we. I'm not going to say they are very talented. Hmm. We are all talented. But they are Africa. hard working. We are yeah. all hard working. Mm. But these people are backed by, by very big brands, very big companies. Like Rihanna is backed by Def Jam. Yeah. He, her budget of like song rollout only is about $1.5 million. Yes. And that one here in Africa, no one can invest it in music. That's yeah. too much money. Yeah. So competing with Rihanna, doing English on the international scene becomes very hard because she has a very big team. She has a very big budget. So nevertheless, she's also talented. But ta talent is not really a very big factor because also we here in Uganda, in Africa, yeah. we are talented. But another difference is how much are you willing to put in to push and compete with Rihanna singing English. Okay. And that's why I come in and sing my luo, mix in Luganda, or do my Swahili. And I'm sure I'll compete with Rihanna very well because when people are tired of listening to the English songs, they will have mm. to listen to mine. Mm. And I'm a, a, like an alternative to Rihanna. So that puts me at another level. And because, because music, actually music is something very unique, that music does not really matter about what you're singing about. Music is melody, is a feeling. You can enjoy music without even understanding the words. Like in Uganda, we've enjoyed Lingala for so long without even knowing what, the, what they meant, hmm. but we, we liked the music. Okay. Yeah. So then let's get to blending. Yep. I think this is a big area that we fade as Africans. Yes. Why? And what can we do to make it right? Um, as Africans, we have an issue of bandwagon. Hmm. You see... When I look at uh, videos of Beyonce, she's putting on her dresses, her nice dresses, American dresses or Spanish dresses. Yeah. And uh, she brands herself that way because that is her culture from where she is. So we tend to want to have that kind of thing within our music videos. And that is different. You find them shooting videos with uh, Ferraris, with great cars. Yeah. But here in Africa, you don't have those cars. Yeah. We have very few. So... Our artists here struggle uh, going around hiring these cars to shoot with videos, of which Beyonce uses what she has in her garage. So even you, you should use exactly what you have within your home, within your means to shoot your video. Yeah. So the branding, the outlook, we as Africans... But then before you, you go, <coughs> like uh, when you look at Africa right now, yeah. if someone is coming from the US or mm. anywhere, he finds like when he comes to Entebbe Airport, he's go expecting to find those mud hut houses, mm, grass hut uh, houses, grass -hat houses uh, the traditional stuff that we uh, used to do. We used to do. But the reality is, you will find mansions in Muyenga, you find yes, high yeah. scrappers in Uganda. So these are uh, kind of elements that are reserved in the villages. And, we, and then these artists think it's right now that we express and do what we have here. Because there was a school of thought that said <coughs> that these African artists are really rich. Because the cars they use in the videos, they own them. But then when you go to the, their counterparts in US and UK, these are board cars. Someone comes, then after the shooting with the video, he gets to the Uber and runs off. So does depicting the real picture in Africa work out? Work out, yeah. Yes. Uh, like you said, for example, Beyonce and Jay-Z, I think, own about 53 cars in, the, in their garage. So if they have 53 cars and they want to shoot a video, I think they can just choose one, one. among us that. Now, as in Uganda here, most of artists here own a simple car like Raum or any simple Toyota car. Mm -hmm. And very few can use that car into their videos because they think it's of low standard. 
Yeah. So, like I said, you, we, we, you don't need to be who you're not. Just use what you have. At home, people use uh, local charcoal stoves, but when they're shooting videos, they're using cookers. So that is funny. Just yeah. use your sigiri, do your shooting, and be yourself. Out there, we can also tease them with our personal cultures, okay. as they tease us with their cultures. So when we have our own things, it's our own, and they'll also want to see it. That's why when a Muzungu comes to Uganda, you'll find him putting on this kind of shirt, yeah. Yeah. because they think this is African, and they feel the pride of having it and going back home with it. But you find us here home, we're again fighting to have those suits in our videos, which is funny. Okay. Yeah. So when we look at the trends, because uh, trends change yep. now and then, should an artist insist on doing what he does best or what he likes or who she or she could follow the trend <coughs> so that he can be selling? Okay. There are two things. There is an artist just who does music because of the passion then there is an artist that does music for business so those two artists are totally different and uh, their positioning becomes different when they're doing their music okay. because when you look at uh, pdd he's an artist but he's more of a business artist a businessman yeah. so he's not really that much he doesn't do strange things with this kind of music but he looks for money in music so there is being an artist just because you have passion. You only sing and sometimes they even call you for shows and you're like, I'm tired, I won't come. Because you're not business oriented. Yeah, yeah. So like now you've said uh, an artist should look at what? It will depend. If you wake up and you're like, I want to make money in business. I want to do my talent, which is mm -hmm. singing, and I need to make money in singing and I survive. So you become a professional artist, not an artist, artist because of passion. Yeah. A professional artist earns from there a living. So if you earn a living in music, it means you're going to have everything that any business should have. A manager, okay. you should, uh, if you have a manager, you should make sure you have an account meant for your music. Then you have a business plan. You have where you're heading to. Okay, let's have a simple break. We're coming back and we're picking it right from where you saw. Deal TV. Learn and earn. Wewe no mwambazi kankwa njulire S and H stylish shop tutunda hijabs, veils, handbags, crossbags, short and long dresses, tuina shirts, zabami, tuina office wears, night wears, knickers, oblega sako no vina wabachala, tuina leggings ne jeggings, kwasane ni spijabami, sako na bachala, tutunda stockings, wallets, kwasane vests, ezabami, nabana, tusangi wa kukukanya house shop number C04 opposite net toto e wakaliga watu kubide ku number ze simu zino 0 msambu 5 bidi 0 msambu 2 mbidi asatu mutanu owa 0 msambu msambu bidi 0 msambu 2 mbidi asatu mutanu owa tugoberele ku facebook page ya fs and h style shop owa ku instagram ya fs and h style shop okumanye bise inga u Deal TV, learn and earn. Thanks for watching Deal TV, learn and earn. This is the deal with Matt 75. It's very inspirational, it's very educating. You just have to keep locked and then until the end, we will be giving you more and more of the best you need. So, as we've been saying, like you need a financial manager, you need an artist manager, you need. So, any artist out there? What he or she should he look at when hiring or getting a manager or this team <coughs> that is going to help him uplift the game? Okay. Uh, about about turning your your music uh, your music uh, passion into, into business, business yeah. uh, starts with one you understanding what you want. Yeah. This is what they call an artist being prepared to be managed, and then a manager getting prepared to manage an artist. An artist getting prepared to be managed should understand that the manager has the vision and the direction. Okay. And uh, they should understand that they don't make every decision because uh, if you're alone, you can make your decisions. Whether it fails you, whether it, it, it works out, there is no problem. But here when you, you're going to be managed as an artist, you realize your decisions also mm -hmm. fail others. You have mm -hmm. a team that survives on you. You have a team that looks at you as, as a venture. So that means you should uh, start 
if you if if you, if you want to do something, you have to sit into a dialogue yeah. with your entire team to make sure you go the right direction. So one, as an artist who who looks for a manager, you should find someone who is a fan of your music, okay. as a must. Someone must first fall in love with mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. So they'll also work out very well because they'll be excited on what they're doing. Okay. That is one. Secondly, you should have someone that really understands the market. That is someone who knows what is necessary. Mm. So that's someone who, who knows where to take you. Mm. You tell, actually, as an artist, it's you to tell your manager the that manager. I, want to be an, I, I want to be an international artist. Yeah. What do I need? So your manager has to do, the, to do the research and, yeah. and you make sure you get there. And remember, when you get there, your manager earns too. Oh. So you benefit. It's a win-win because his percentage grows whenever you're earning much money. So as an artist, you should get ready to be managed. You should understand what a manager does and you should be ready to listen to your manager very well. Mm -hmm. So finding a manager as an artist for a startup, you might not have the money to pay a manager, but you might have your friend who loves your music and who is proud of you. That friend of yours can be a manager. Yeah. That friend of yours can do whatever is needed to make sure you get somewhere. But you see, as a manager, needs there are qualities of a good manager. Yeah. And there are one of the qualities your manager should be someone who is persistent. That is someone who does not give up, however much things get hard. Yeah. Then uh, someone who knows how to, to get through the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers yeah. are these people that fail us from maybe getting a performance at a, at a venue Indeed. or getting an interview at, at a radio. radio station, at so your manager has to know how to persist, how to, to persuade, how to get through. Yeah. That is one. Then secondly, your manager should be connected with contacts. Yeah. So now like as an, arti uh, an upcoming artist, you have a manager who is a friend and the manager knows nothing. You can find some books like uh, Artist Management as a Business. You give your, your friend who is going to be your manager. Your friend goes through and understands really the basic necessities. So when, um, because in such books you even have uh, samples of how contracts should be signed, uh, endorsements, how endorsements are done, and how record labels work and how you get the deals. Mm -hmm. So you're going to train your friend now to become a professional manager. And you can go step by step oh. and you get there. Simply because your friend has passion and loves your work. Mm -hmm. But if you find someone who really does not love what you're doing, however much they know what is necessary, they won't really take you anywhere. Okay. So that's what you need. So from there then we go to quite a different question, but I think it's needed. There. How uh, can we go over the social media thing? With okay. the advance of technology, uh, we've seen that they are those, uh, how do they call them, apps that are specifically made for Africans. Because if you see and take on Africa as a whole, we have a big population that can, if we can get these guys to support us, we can be satisfied before even we look at Asia, America and the rest. But then how can we choose and embrace this social media and the new technology to get to the next level? Okay, uh, speaking about social media, social media is very vital for an artist if you're really looking into getting to the international level. One, record labels, if they're going really to sign you, assuming like a, like Arista Records, like Atlantic Records or, or Sony, mm. they look at your social media presence and how you interact with people, how you have support, how your following grows. So actually they use it as a yardstick because they know it will be easy to sell your product since you already have a market. Yeah. So uh, back from that, how do we use this to, to our advantage? Mm. One, as an artist, you should fight hard to have a big following that people that really follow you mm. wake up every day and they really see. If you have a new product, they go on and they're ready oh, to support you. Then secondly, in Africa, we have platforms. For example, there is a platform called Music in Africa. Yeah. yeah, it's a very big platform. I think it's the biggest in Africa here so far. That's according to me. I don't know. There could be others out there. Yeah, yeah but it's a very good platform because uh, you create an account. Sometimes you don't really have the, 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 the finance to have your own website yeah. as a beginner. But when you get to music in Africa, you create your account there. You upload your music, your links, 
of like a Tidal or Spotify there and you put your contacts in case they need you to be booked for a performance. Mm-hmm. So you start, we start with that. And uh, we have festivals like South Zabsara. I realized if you needed to have a performance there, yeah. they tell you to open up an account with Music in Africa. These people are really helping you to have a platform, to have somewhere where people can find you, find discover you from. Yeah. So in Africa, I'm so sure we are organized. It is now uh, up to us to embrace what, what has come up. In Uganda, we have FESA. FESA, FESA bookings. They can book, they, when you get an account with FESA, they can book you as an artist from there. You can also monitor your performance on radio stations. They also help you with distribution. Uh, earlier on, FESA used to be free of charge, but currently, um, as I was told, it's about 500000 yeah. So approximately like a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. approximately. Though not very sure, but it's it's now a paid service. I don't know why, and yet uh, platforms like Music in Africa is is absolutely free, and yeah. they are doing a big thing. So Feza out there, I think if you get this message, please do us a favor. Some of us are also struggling and starting. But still up. on still Feza, Feza adds the. Uh, element that I like is the monitoring element. So like if your song was played on a certain radio station, yeah. there'll be monitoring and monitoring. Then that takes me to the next question because uh, the uh, uh, element of plagiarism and then copyright has been an issue not only in Africa and even in other countries, okay. but then more so in Africa. And uh, the artists are complaining they can't earn from their crafts. What can it be done to solidify uh, copyright issues are very very complicated issues uh, first on foremost it has affected our industry we don't really earn much money like those people from the the west mm. from our own work because our copyright laws are very weak so this starts with the government so the government should really make sure that they they, they put in the incentives to make sure that our work is really valued and we get paid then secondly, our people, our, our, the mass in Africa is, yeah. is a little bit poor. Yeah. Not all people can afford really buying music because initially so there are some people that really earn a dollar a day. And if they buy music, then what will they do? How will they feed? They have families. Yeah. And that is the situation we are having here in Africa. So it complicates everything. Then secondly, also us, the African artists, I think when we start talking about copyright, copyright, we, are, we don't know what we are talking about. Yeah. Because for sure, the issue of uh, copyright, the law is, is broken first by we, the artists. Yeah. You check an artist, 90% of their songs is really picking a song from either a Nigerian artist or a Kenyan artist. Already you, yeah. you, 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 you're saying you need copyright. But you want copyright on a copied pro- on a copied uh, project. So you're already infringing on other people's Yes, rights. you're already infringing on another fellow artist's right. And you're saying again, you need copyright for what you've already stolen. So yeah. you can't steal item and then you say, I want a when way that, I, uh, that you protect my item that you've just stolen. Yeah. We lack originality. So by this, I think it all begins, it starts with us. If we've failed to, to really respect our, our counterparts' work, then you, we expect, again, police to protect our own stolen goods. Then I don't think that really is good. I'm sure we can be original. We can sing about our Lumonde in Uganda, other than singing about uh, the pizzas and whatever and the, and the high life. We can be ourselves and we can have good life. So that goes with the content. So you have to sing stuff that people relate to it. Yes. Okay, let's go first. Short break. We'll be back. Deal TV, learn and earn. We have a kid of a move for my retire. We have a kid of a move for my retire. So lo kume dovo ziri angenga go gofu ne skinny angenge shanana inywa hell water hell water na chomi no water. Deal TV learn and earn.
Oh, thanks for watching the TV Learn, and, and this is the deal with my 75 with my guest. We are discussing the essential information that you need to make it a success in the music industry, especially in Africa. So you as a world music artist, if you look at, okay, there are a few music, uh, world music artists that are out there, but then the, the Sharif Keita, those Wombo Lombo, Wombo Lombo, who is that? Angelique Joe. Angelique Joe and the likes. They are up there. But then when you go these other upcoming artists and then um, they have good quality work, but because it's not mainstream, yeah. they, they don't push, they're not <coughs> up there. What's the problem and how can it be solved? So if you be big, if I can see a world music artist like uh, in the position of uh, Beyonce, is it bad? Or are they supposed to be underground work? Okay. <clears throat> Ah, uh, you're very right with that. Um, world music artists, most of them tend to be mediocre artists. Yeah. Uh, like some at our level, because people that do really our culture and local sounds are local people, as we might say. Yeah. There are those groups from villages that really do our music, that really speak our language, that really speak our, our culture, our ways of life. And these people are down there. These people really need support because uh, some of them just play their dongos and drums. Mm -hmm. They don't know about internet. Yeah. So, you know, people who really embrace culture are culture, people who are really culture. Yeah. And culture people are really so down and most people are broke and poor people. Yeah. That is one. Uh, when you look at people like Nanduja, her music is good. Yeah. But uh, her endeavors of pushing her music is not like, uh, like Kenzo's endeavors mm. or... It's not like uh, FIFA makers endeavors. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where this comes from, but you see, for Nanduja's case, maybe I wouldn't really. I think she's comfortable where she is. And I think that is what really she liked and she has where, what she needed. Mm -hmm. So um, for other people, it's a bit tricky. You see, the world music is so funny that people, some people really look at it as cultural things. So if you really put it so much onto the mainstream thing, sometimes the, the population that would really arise and get excited over it is a bit low, like locally. Mm -hmm. But internationally, then you'd be big because they're seeing something new. You're there to compete with Jay-Z, Beyonce, and that is something that is great. Mm -hmm. But uh, back to the point that don't they really like to be also into the limelight. Yeah. You see, I think some of them are also lazy. Yeah. yeah, because uh, if you really put in the much strength that these mainstream artists put in and the budget, I'm so sure you're going to break through and get to another level. Yeah. Like uh, an example, I think I would give Kenzo. Kenzo. Kenzo is a world music artist, Yeah, though he blends in different styles. But world music is basically uh, understanding your really? culture and blending it in what you're doing. So I call him a world music artist. And... Uh, he puts in the endeavors of a mainstream artist. Mm. He promotes like a mainstream artist. And I'm sure the benefit he received, he has received out of that is far bigger compared even to the mainstream artists we have in Uganda. Yeah. I'm sure even his earnings. Because uh, he gets shows and performances in different yeah, places. Yeah. So I think the, these people are not very aggressive, the world music artists. And in their nature also, some of them are soft people. And because world music teaches you to, basically in world music we sing about life, we sing about things that affect people and solutions. Actually, we are like ambassadors of the well-being of, of Africans. Okay. So we really wouldn't make names the way other mainstream artists do. Others make names negatively and until they, they make sure they're in the news, they're in the papers. That really does not work out with, with us, with the, who do the world music thing. Mm. We are ambassadors of African culture, so we have to speak well, we have to act like Africans and how they're supposed to be. Well, that's good. So, if you are to recommend or mention like five artists <coughs> out of Africa, the new generation of world music, that okay. someone out there can use as a blueprint to fall, and like you say, this, if you can get to look at this person, is taking the right stri strides or is taking the right direction? Who are the five that you can recommend? 
Uh, the five, the five, the five makes it a bit tricky. But I think I can stand. I can start with Uganda. Um, in Uganda, we have we have a lady known as Apio Moro. Yes, okay. I think that girl is exceptional. The lady is exceptional, and I and I'm a fan of her music, and I love her so much the way she does her things, and I think she makes me proud of being Ugandan. Okay. For sure, I think I would speak about her. And uh, secondly, I think Eddie Kenzo is doing us a great job here in Uganda. Yeah. And I'm also very happy he has presented us well out there. He has done his thing right. And I think he's doing the right thing. I think I love the way he does his thing. And uh, in Uganda here, basically, I have uh, the twins, the formerly the twins. They, I think they call themselves currently the Uganda boys. boys. Yeah. yeah, they've done something. So let's get out of Uganda for the get next Get out of two. Uganda. Yeah. No, you ask for five, I think. Yeah. Let me beg you, I, I give you more. Okay. Because I think there are many. <laughs> okay. And they deserve something. Okay. JNL Zamba, the CMB Music Group, I think you guys are doing great. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing. I think uh, they are worth mentioning too. Him and the, and, and the wife. wife yeah. uh, out of Africa. <clears throat> I look at... Uh, there's, there are some people like from uh, Cameroon, there is some guy known as Richard Bonner. Um. I love his music, he's great, and what he does is great. And uh, if we go to Senegal, we have artists there in Senegal that are doing well. And though some of them are really grown, and uh, but you know with world music, music yeah. is music. The more you grow, the more yes, you, yes. you fit into the position. Yes, of there is West Madiko, yeah. and there is uh, Baba Mal. Wow. And uh, you soon do it. I think these guys are great. Going to Benin, I think we have Angelique Hijo. Yeah. She does good work. And uh, I cannot forget our, our, our colleagues in Mali. These guys are also great. Salif yeah. Keita and the likes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I believe Africa is well presented out there. Okay, how are we missing? We are on the list. So, <laughs> we yalla, we yalla, we yalla from Ghana. Ghana. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I should not forget we yalla. Because we yalla is, uh, is, she's true to herself. She's true to Africa. And everything of hers is African. I think I love you so much, we yalla. Okay, so when uh, I was doing my research, I saw that uh, the influence of the Nigerians. Okay being in the media uh, houses out there yeah. has done a great job for this uh, Afrobeat artist to okay. make it. So if you go to California, if you go to down the radio stations, you might find a Nigeria as a Shedra, you might find a Nigeria as a DJ in yeah. the club. They are prepared. So don't you think this uh, being that uh, media personalities majorly in these other countries, the likes of Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda, uh, being uh, more into local stuff, that they are not aggressive to get to the next step, is also doing us a disfavor. Okay. Uh, before answering that, I think this was a trick. I had to, to, to keep it to myself. That uh, one of the artists I've not mentioned is Michele Mkisa. That is me <laughs> from Uganda, and I'm sure if I spoke my name amongst the other people, you might you might not have not remembered me easily. Yeah. But I think I'm also a great artist, okay. and I'm fighting hard to be a great one, and I'm trying to be good. So those who appreciate me, I think I'm very happy, and I'm excited too. So you should also look out for Michele mm -hmm. Mkisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, Speaking about the other issue, whether our music, uh, the, the music personalities, people who are really into the music thing system, are not really fighting internationally for us in East Africa, uh, compared to our people from Nigeria who are really fighting hard to push the things. I think that thing is not that they are not fighting hard, yeah. as you've said. It's, 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 it comes down to the heart and your personality. Yeah. They are also doing hard. They are working hard. I'm not going to say they don't, they're not working hard. But the difference is uh, the you Nigerians... Know, why do I say they are not working hard, mm. hard or they are not pressurized? Because uh, mm. in many cases, they have been uh, <coughs> choosing the Ugandan artists, uh, these other artists, of not going international, of not making international hits. Yep. But then, who told these Ugandan presenters, the TV presenters and radio personalities, that they can't go out there and win those awards? 
oh. of international media personalities, of going from uh, any TV on NBS and go and work on uh, yeah. EMA Europe. <clears throat> mm. Actually, I'm back on my point. It comes down to the heart. Yeah. You see, Nigerians have a tendency of everything for Niger. Yeah. A Nigerian in the UK will receive a song from a fellow Nigerian who he does not even know. And then he's like, no, this, this is a boy is. from home. They push that. Yeah. With us here in Uganda, it's again very hard. When I call someone who is a radio personality, I'm like, this is Michele Mukisa, please. Can you really help me out? I have this music. He's like, how much money do you have for me? And where do I gain from? So it is very tricky that our own people are suppressing our own music and our own system. It's we that are letting ourselves down. Unlike the Nigerians who are fighting for fellow Nigerians out there, I think uh, this thing comes down to our personality. Because if you really love your people, I don't think you would really fight hard to make sure that they go down instead of going up. Mm. So the reason we are not going internationally is simply because the people that would really help us go internationally can't. Mm. For mm. example, like me, when I put my music onto Facebook, we came across, uh, with my team, we came across uh, a radio personality from Argentina. Mm. So when we spoke a few lines, it's like, okay, share me your music. We shared the entire EP. So he was very excited to the extent that he needs a drop. He needs an intro for the radio. So we speak about his, his yeah. show, so that he, when he's playing, the, he, he's on his show, he plays me speaking about his show. And he was too excited. Yeah. And he went on to say, you even shoot a video version. I need it for our own TV. And this guy decided to do all this free of charge, out of love out of joy and he went on to pick my own post my image and share it on his own page and he was like this is international africa argentina connection yeah. and he was very excited and i don't think that happens easily with our people here yeah. because when you call someone even if he knows you he's like nah i need i need this amount of money for that so it becomes very tricky very tricky i think the difficulty starts with us if we really learn to support our own people, yeah. we will get somewhere. Yes, these people have also something they say. These radio personalities, these guys, when you help them, they forget you. Yeah. You don't help people to remember you. Yeah. You see, when you're helping, when your God is appreciating you, he appreciates you alone. Mm. When, you're, when, you, when, you, when you're prospering in your businesses, it's because of some of the good things you've been doing out there. Truly. It's you who benefits from that. So... You don't think of helping people because you want them to remember you. You don't do. Yeah. Because for me, I'm a Christian, and in Christianity, they say when you're helping with the, with the right hand, you make sure the left hand does not, what, does not even know that you've helped. Yeah. But these people help you while they are waiting for you to become a star, and they want money from you. So if, you, if one does not do that, they're like, this people, when you help them, they forget. You don't help people to remember. You do your part, move on, and that's how humanity is. Yeah. We are here to help each other as human beings. We are okay. Africans. Thank so. you. Do your part and then God will do the rest. Yes. So uh, let's get to our second last question to do with <clears throat> how can an artist out there be able to earn from the music or from the brand as a whole? So you can highlight a few elements that someone can look at so that he can be able to earn something. Okay. okay. As an artist, you should uh, have a direction. You keep your focus such that people that see you will always know that this person speaks so much about this. So here, like me, I'm, a, I'm a, an activist. I, I stand out for children, for women, for Africans, for humanity. Mm. So it's very easy for me to work hand in hand with, uh, with Save the Children mm. on a project for children because I always sing about how to raise up children, how to care about children. I sing about how to look after women, how not to beat women. So an NGO that deals with women, like Fawe, will look into dealing with me because I have a direction. But if today I'm singing about helping women and tomorrow I'm saying women are stupid, yeah. then no one will deal with me because I don't have a direction. So if you're putting yourself out there and you have a direction, you will have people that will collaborate with you. That is one. And secondly, with your music, if you put your music onto platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, and uh, the rest, whenever they play your music, they stream your music, you get paid and the money gets into your account. Mm. So that is another way. 
Then in the third way, you should look out for festivals and performances. Yeah. You always apply. You share your, your portfolio. And there's all, they'll always give you jobs. And you'll also perform. Okay, now as we wind up, let's go specifically to Mikere Mokisale. What out there needs to know? What is up? Wow. What are you preparing? What's out? How can they get in touch with you? Okay. Everything that you want to tell the world is now your time. Okay. Uh, basically, as Mikele Mukisa, I'm a world music artist. I sing about things that affect people and really fight hard to find a solution through my lyrics and make sure that we get into a better life as Africans, human beings, and people, and the world at large. Okay. Uh, basically, to find me, I'm on most platforms. I'm on iTunes, that is Apple Music. You can find me on Amazon Music. I'm also on Facebook as Michele Mukisa. That's my 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 my, my page. Spell Mukele. Michele M I K E L E. Mukisa is as simple as M U K I S A. Yeah. So Michele Mukisa is me, and you can find me when you enter Michele Mukisa on Google. I'm on uh, Music in Africa. I'm on Ethno Cloud. You can go listen to my music there. So basically, I'm on all those platforms. So if you need to contact me, you can get to my Facebook page. My manager's number is right there. You, you can speak to him. And uh, you should feel free to talk to me on anything, on any matter. Should we sing about this? Should we sing about that? Should we advocate this? That's how life is. So that is Michele Mkisa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't You're take welcome. it more than that, but we have so much in store for you. All you need to know, we'll be coming back with Mukere Mukisa for a detailed analysis and then a profiling segment. But now, from me and the team here, I can say thank you for watching Deal TV, Deal TV Learn and Earn. Consider subscribing, commenting, liking, and sharing. I just take my palm to my forehead and say bye bye. Deal TV Learn and Earn.